We pray that you will bless the one that will bring the word this afternoon, that it will bless our hearts and that we will apply it to our everyday living. And forgive us of our sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless us in your hand. Amen. Hello, saints. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> Hello, saints. Well, I'm pretty excited to be bringing the lesson today. And uh, I'll be brief, not to hold everybody um, uh, too long, but, and <clears throat> the topic is on um, peace, um, P-E-A-C-E. -E. Um, after a little prayer and reflection, uh, I felt that this would be appropriate topic uh, for the situation we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I believe God wants to speak to us, speak to our hearts, our minds, and our spirits on the subject of peace. And, uh, and I believe it'll be a blessing to everyone. So that's the topic. And if I were to choose a subject, the subject would be on um, paths of peace. And I'll say that again. The subject would be paths the peace. So the goal for this lesson is to define what peace is and what peace is not. My second goal for this lesson is to share and to illuminate what God's word says about peace. And my third and final goal is to, for everyone to understand the significance of passing the peace in our everyday lives. Hopefully everyone can hear me. If you can't hear me, uh, I can talk louder. Um, if you can't hear me, just say, uh, speak louder or, or you have it. Have it. I hear you well, sir. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So, uh, for the introduction, the Bible reads, the Bible records many things about plagues, pestilence, famines, earthquakes, and many other tragedies that befell mankind. And throughout it all, God has been faithful to his people. Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, verse nine says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful because he keeps his covenant. He is steadfast in love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. A minister friend of mine back in 2019, and also I heard a pastor speak on what they felt God was saying in this season. I thought it was a coincidence, but I also felt that God was in it. And the verse that they gave me and that they were speaking on that God had laid on their heart back in early 2019 was from Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 27. And that, so to give you a little background information on Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and uh, I did all the scriptures on it. So if you want the notes, I can email you the notes uh, afterwards. And that way you can concentrate. You don't have to feel like you have to write notes or be distracted. So a little background information on Hebrews, the 12th chapter. It starts, it starts out by Paul telling us that everyone should run our race with patience while looking to Jesus as our author and finisher of our faith. As we move further in the twelfth chapter, verse of of uh, as we move further in the twelfth ch chapter, Paul tells us to not despise the chastisement of God because it is an act of love toward us. It's a sign that we're not bastards when the Lord chastises us. It's a sign that we're God's son, and chastisement also develops character. The scripture says it this way. Nevertheless, afterward, meaning the chastisement, it, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. That's Hebrews 12 and 11. As we continue reading the 12th chapter of Hebrews, we discover that Esau lost his birthright to his brother Jacob. And that act of losing his birthright to Jacob displeased God, and Esau was rejected. Finally, in the 12th chapter, Paul admonishes us to 
not refuse to listen or take heed of what God is saying. Many times we will not receive God's word because of the person who is speaking. But Paul reminds us that it's, it's God who is talking. When God speaks, the earth shakes. But this time, heaven shakes also. So all of that leads us into Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 26 through 27, which is our focus scripture, our focus scriptures. And the 26th verse says, whose voice referring to God, then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yes, once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Verse 27, and this word once more signifies the removal of those things that are shaken as of things that are made and those things which cannot be shaken but will remain. I'll paraphrase that. Anything that can be shaken will be shaken and anything that cannot be shaken shall remain unshaken. I'll say that one more time. Anything that can be shaken will be shaken. And anything that cannot be shaken shall remain unshaken. When the men, what the men of God were saying is that they believe that God is taking advantage of this pandemic as a time for shaking and a time for mm. testing. Anything that's in our lives that is not unshakable shall remain. And anything that is shaken shall fall apart. For some people, they discover, and you can see this, that toilet paper is more important than money in this season. Lysol, sanitizers, <laughs> and face masks are more valuable than medicine in this season. Who would have anticipated or even visualized America being in this type of shape? Mm -hmm. During this time of shaking and testing, God wants us to have his peace. We must endeavor to pass the peace in this pandemic season. Mm -hmm. Like many English words, peace is a word with many different definitions. So it's my challenge today to speak clearly and concisely the three main definitions for peace. And the first definition is freedom from disturbance and tranquility, mental calm, serenity, and finally, a state or period in which there is no war or war has ended. That is the definition that's one of the def definitions that is generally, uh, generally used to define peace. So, as we see here in God's word, God mm -hmm. teaches us that there is a blessing for those who actively make peace. And Matthew 5 and 9, it states, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Next, we discover that how you talk and use certain words will give peace and take peace away. 1 Peter 3, 10, verses 10 and 11, Okay, I'm sorry. I just thought everyone froze up for a moment. Uh, I'll give that to you again. Uh, <clears throat> how we talk and how we use certain words will give peace and take peace away. All right. It's First Peter, uh, the third chapter, verses 10 through 11. And it states, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him ensue evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. We also have learned that 
Peace gives us a lot of personal power over our body, mind, and spirit. By practicing self-control, we can accomplish great things in our personal lives. Mm -hmm. And God's word teaches this in Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 32. And it states that he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. That's right. Another substitution for mighty will be strong. And he that ruleth his spirit, than he that taketh a city. That's very powerful. I think if a lot of leaders right now will exercise more self-control, we'll have more peace during this pandemic. Uh, point number four, peace is a gift. Don't let people, situations take away your peace. We must go through the process of learning how to keep our personal peace. This can be supported by John 14 and 27. And it states, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, the peace that God gives to you is a gift. We shouldn't let everything that we're going through and that we're hearing shake us and take our personal peace. That peace we're not born with, but we have to develop it as we go through life situations. Mm -hmm. Point number five, we must sleep and rest in God's peace. It makes for a better night's rest. This is supported by Psalms 4 and 8, and it states, I will both lie me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. Uh, many of you all know that I work at, for years I worked a rotating shift job, and during those times, I didn't sleep too well. And I have a lot of coworkers, they take medicine for sleep apnea, and you name it. And I decided, I did some research on it, on uh, sleep apnea. I also did research on things that would prevent you from going to sleep. And many people in the scientific community, they would tell you, before you go to bed, go to bed at least 30 minutes to an hour early so that you can calm your mind down. And whatever is weighing on you, you want to release it, let it go, so that you won't feel so troubled when you go to bed. And even practicing those principles, we're able to go to sleep, but sometimes we still won't get any rest. I believe if we put our trust in God, we can sleep much better. Going on to point number six, <clears throat> your mind, your thoughts will determine what level of peace that you experience in your daily life. And that's supported by Isaiah 26 and three. Thou will keep him in perfect peace All right. whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. I heard someone teach that it's almost impossible to keep negative thoughts from coming into your head, mm -hmm. but it's your responsibility to determine how you deal with it. So <clears throat> I knew this lady at work. And one day she decided to, after I knew her for a while, she said to me, I got a bad mind, son. I just want you to know that. Sometimes I walk up to people, I just slap them because I feel like it. <laughs> and her peers told me, they said, she crazy now. She will do it. So they warned me. So in that situation, she have made a decision that whatever negative thoughts come into her head, she was going to act on it. But for many of us, we need to continue to act, act we should continue to practice temperance and self-control. That when these negative thoughts come into our minds, that we properly think about them, and then after we weigh them, we don't act on them. But Isaiah 26 and 3 says, he will keep you in perfect peace, All right. whose mind is stayed on thee. 
So if we keep our minds on the right stuff, we can maintain a level of peace and tranquility. Point number seven, we must walk in a spirit of peace as we go through our trials and tribulations in life. John 16 and 33 states, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Mm. Maintaining a spirit of peace isn't easy. People are anointed to pick out your weaknesses and find your soft spots. But we must endure these trials and tribulations and Jesus encourages us that he too has overcome the world and we can as well. Point number eight, we must forgive to keep our peace. By actively forgiving, we can make and keep friendships and maintain good fellowship. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3 and 13 states, forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. I'm just going to keep it real. All right. It's hard to forgive. It's a big challenge, especially when what they've done to you has just been too hard, unnecessary, and yet people still did it anyway and they feel like you should just go on as nothing has happened. I think each of us have to learn how to forgive and what I guess I would say tools I use may not work for Crystal, mm -hmm. but what tools she used may not work for me. Mm -hmm. But we all have to discover what works for each other so that we can practice forgiveness and maintain our personal peace. Point number, 10, number nine, peace and thanksgiving work together. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3 and 15 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Some of the worst people to deal with are some people who are ungrateful and unthankful. They seem to always come back for more when you do an act of generosity. They feel like you just give them away stuff for free and they're entitled. <laughs> so we need to continue to watch out for people like that because they are, um, they'll rob you. They get everything they can out of you. And, um, and they just keep, keep freeloading on God's people. Point number 10, it says being a peacemaker doesn't make you passive. You can still stand up for yourself. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now that all men, some people are just unreasonable. They, they're just resistant. Mm -hmm. They're fighters. There's nothing you can do to win them over. The more you give, they, they just want it all. And they'll never be satisfied and happy with whatever you do to maintain the peace in the relationship. That's when you should separate yourself and move on. And point number 11 is, peace works with mercy and love. You will have to be a merciful and loving to get or maintain peace sometimes. Jude 1 and 2 states, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Definition number two for peace. Peace is an exclamation, which simply means a sudden cry or remark, especially expressing surprise, anger, or pain. Peace can be used as a friendly greeting, and it can be used as an order to remain silent. Point number 12. To practice peace is a heavenly concept. Many people on earth are motivated by carnal desires like lust and money. But as Christians, we discover that it is wise to seek peace. Mm -hmm. 
This is supported by James 3 and 17, and it states, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Sometimes people look at Christians and they simply say, meekness means weakness. <laughs> and when they come for you, because you got that look about you, All right. you're so friendly, you look like a sheep and they're wolves and they're ready for lunch. <laughs> Point number 13, Jesus. spankings today by our parents or the Lord will produce a fruitful and peaceful life in our future. Hebrews 12 and 11, and it states, now our chastening for the present seemeth to, seemeth to be joyous, seemeth not to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Before I go into our final definition, our next definition of peace, to understand what something is, it's important to understand what something is not. We understand that peace means freedom from disturbance and tranquility. Therefore, the opposite of peace would be noise and irritation. An example of someone taking your peace would be when you're on the phone and your children are making all this noise in the background. We also understand that peace means mental calm and serenity. Therefore, the opposite of peace would be agitation and distress, which simply means extreme anxiety, sorrow, and pain, which means someone have taken away your peace. An example would be after you got pulled over by the police or the state trooper for speeding, you find out that your insurance had been expired five months ago. You forgot to change your credit card information when you switch banks. All your peace is gone. The third example of what we discovered on what peace means is a state or period in which there is no war. That simply means that the opposite of peace in that definition would be conflict and war. Someone's always coming for you, inboxing you on Facebook, dropping little hints, throwing little side messages. You know they want some, but you saying, as soon as you see them in WM, WM grocery store, they go to run. <laughs> so the third definition of peace is a Hebrew definition. And it simply means shalom. I'll say that again. The third definition of peace simply means shalom. And it simply means to be safe in mind, body, or mind and body. It speaks to our completeness, fullness, or a type of wholeness that encourages you to give back, to generously repay something in some way. A true biblical definition for shalom refers to an inward sense of completeness and wholeness. In Israel today, when you greet someone like good morning or goodbye, you would say shalom. And that literally means, may you be full of well-being or may your health and prosperity be upon you. Simply put, they are passing the peace. It is a part of Jewish culture to say shalom. So when they meet someone and say shalom, like we would say, hello, good morning, what's up, my boy, how you doing? <laughs> they say shalom, meaning peace on you. All right. Peace in your finances, peace in your health, peace in your marriage, 
peace in your workplace, peace in the political sphere, peace on your job, peace in your purse, peace all over you. So as a culture, they are passing the peace. Proverbs 18 and 21 states, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. As we speak and declare peace into the lives of God's people, they are strengthened and encouraged. As we speak and declare peace, we are using the power that God has put in our tongues to have a positive impact in our lives and in the sphere of influence. So we should start passing the peace. As people talk about what Trump should be doing, not doing, we've had three years of this man proving to us that um, he needs a lot more prayer and a lot of God's grace. And some people, we need to continue to pray that God would give him the wisdom and guidance. And the scripture says when we pray for our leaders, we'll have peace in our lives. Mm -hmm. We can pass the peace. So my last and final definition for peace is, it's a name. It's a title. Peace is a person. And his name is Jesus. And Isaiah 9 and 6 states, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The reason so many people are losing their peace right now, it has nothing to do with finances. It has nothing to do with health. It has nothing to do with a bad report. It has everything to do with their trust in God. As we look to God during this pandemic season, we must realize that God did not bring us this far All to right. just drop us off and you. leave us unsupported and unprovided for. God is a faithful father, and he will be with us until the end. I want to encourage everyone during this teaching that we pass the peace, we remember to keep our faith in God, and we continue to lean upon the Lord and his understanding. As I close, we understand that when God's word goes forth, if it doesn't fall on good ground, it will not spring up. And that's the devil's purpose. The devil is going to attack us to keep us from trusting in God's word. He attacked Eve in the garden. He, had, he tempted Jesus, and he entered into Judas. And he even desired to steal Peter as wheat. But we're going to pass the enemy's attacks. We must hold on to God's word and what God is speaking to us today. And that word is to hold on to him, stay in peace, maintain a peaceful attitude, a peaceful mindset, peace in our hearts, walk in peace, don't let CNN take your peace, Fox News take your peace, Facebook take your peace, Twitter take your peace, <clears throat> Snapchat take your peace, Zoom take your peace. <laughs> don't let the wife, the husband, the children, the bills in the mail all take your peace. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to be real. Don't let the preachers take your peace. <laughs> Don't let nobody take your peace. Keep your peace. In Jesus' name. Um, I want to thank you for this opportunity to do this teaching. I'm encouraged, and I hope that God's people have been blessed, and they feel uplifted, and that something that was said um, has been a blessing to them. Again, thank you. Thank you, Minister Robert Sauceberry. I'm going to go ahead and I've got about eight minutes left, so I'm going to unmute everybody. You might want to make some comments or something you might want to add. So that was good. Everybody go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. I'll do it one. And y'all go ahead and uh, make some comments if you need. Everything was good. It was good.
Good job, Robert. Amen. Job. We definitely need peace in this time of the storm that we in now. We need it. Thanks for yes, letting us see it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Good word. Love Good it. word. Yes, Lord. Good word. Hello, everybody. I'm proud of you, son. Hi. Hi. I don't even know how to do this. Hey. You don't hang Again, thank you, uh, Mr. Robert Salt, man, for your wonderful work. And we not we hope this not the last time because what I heard what I heard tonight, this afternoon, is that you are a, a dynamic teacher. Man. You word. You you write man. you write and divide in the word. That's, That's right. That's right. Uh Tim, Timothy says, study to show thyself approved by the God. A work that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. And you have rightly divide the word of truth today. Thank you again. We have six, six more minutes. Anybody want to add to it or ask a question or anything? I'm good. I see a whole lot of his family members have, have joined uh, the Bible study tonight. I'm going to thank y'all for coming on and supporting uh, your family. Okay. Well, if nothing else, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna ask his his wife, uh, which is my daughter, to close out with a prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for life as well as it is, Lord. I thank you for this powerful word. This word that teaches us to pass the peace. And to know that, God, you are the Prince of Peace and you are a peace that surpasses all understanding. And, Lord, let us take that word and let it resonate in our hearts. Let us I, can't hear. I know this is a time of... Oh, I can't hear. I know this is a time of promo. This is a time of confusion. And we're, you know, we don't know what... Whether, whether we're going left, going right, up, down, because the world the world is uncertainty. But guess what? Look, we have certainty in you, Jesus Christ. We trust you, God, and we thank you and we praise you. And as we leave the Zoom Bible study, Lord, let us continue to have peace. Let everything be well in our household. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And again, I will thank you again, uh, Minister Robert uh, Salisbury, for this for God's word. And before I leave, I want to uh, go ahead and make this announcement to officially to the uh, my Sunday school students and the one that tune in on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for Sunday school. We'll be back on the, uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock on the same link for Sunday school uh, this coming Sunday. Until then, y'all stay safe because I'm trying to stay safe and, and stay out of these stores that ain't got to go in. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.